Thank you, Senator Chang. We have a question for you, Doug. Yeah, I have a question about that uh, HB 499 that extended the, the leases on uh, ceded land to 100 years. It was incredibly um, controversial. And um, my understanding of ceded lands is that uh, they were designated, 1.2 million acres of land was designated as crown lands by uh, Kawikeauli, King Kamehameha III, in 1848 under, in the great Mahele, and that during the overthrow of 1893, uh, they were seized by the provisional government. And then in 1897, there was an attempt to cede it to the US during annexation, but it couldn't be because it was property that was taken without consent or compensation. So it ended up in the uh, public trust. It, it's been very contentious because it's uh, land that uh, should be used really for the benefit of the Native Hawaiians. And, the, and this uh, Bill 499 um, forecloses any more discussion about the land um, for you know, another few decades. And it was really taken as a, a, a slight by many people, including myself. Now, Senator Lorraine Inoue said she didn't even know if ceded la land was such a thing. So my question is really, is my understanding of what ceded land is incorrect? I is there no actually no such thing? And I can let uh, Senator Chang and even, I know there were people that voted both ways here, including uh, Adrian Tam. Anyway, uh, uh, Senator Chang, do you have a uh, response to that? Um, thanks for the question and for the um, history review, Doug. You know, that was not a housing bill. Um, it doesn't affect housing, so I'm not the subject matter expert, and I'll defer to any of my colleagues in the legislature here who um, were more educated on that measure. Thank you, Senator. Is there anyone, any legislator who would like to answer Doug's question? Uh, Doug, Gene Ward here. I'll take a stab at it because for the last hundred years, the Hawaiians have got the short end of the stick on anything that's related to land. Even when it's in law, then any excess land will be given to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. It goes to other private or non nonprofit sectors. So you're, you're, you're right in raising this issue, but it's got to be a watchdog issue that you jump on the legislators before they get farther down the line on that. And remember, these are going to come up every year because it's been for the last 100 years. So be vigilant, and until the Hawaiians get back on the land that was already taken away from them, you should be uh, on guard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, Senator Moriwaki voted for it. Um, is my understanding on what uh, ceded land is uh, erroneous? Is there such a thing as ceded land? Unmute yourself, Senator. Thank you. Um, I did vote for it. Just to be clear, some of the um, work, most of the work was done in the Water and Land Committee. Um, and what the process usually is, is that the subject matter committee does a lot of vetting. Uh, and so we took what came out of that committee. One of the major, um, major concerns that came from the department was that there were landowners that had done um, a lot to improve properties that they had, and they were uh, going to be out if um, if the uh, bill did not pass. So that was one um, one view um, and why uh, it had a lot of controversy as to you know opening it up again when when people were already uh, had the land developed, put a lot of money into it, and would see it um, go away. I guess in terms of of their their um, improvement to the property. So Thank you, Senator. You know, that went forward on that. So. Thank you. Has her hand up. Yes. Thank you, Rick, and thank you, Lila. So if I understand the question correctly, Doug is kind of putting us on the spot and saying, do we believe that ceded lands exist? And I'd like to state clearly 
so that it's no confusion that yes, the, represent, uh, the House of Representatives realizes and recognizes the issue of ceded lands. I think one of the things I'd like to kind of correct about the record is that House Bill 499, as we passed it, really applies to a very limited number of um, lands. And, and, and Doug, I don't want to minimize your concerns because you are absolutely on point as to why some of the struggles with uh, Senator Chang's bill about building uh, on state lands is problematic because of the concerns about ceded lands. And so I think, you know, one of the um, uh, things to remember for the proponents of HB 499 was that there is still a process to ensure that the leases that do go get extended go through a process of overview and oversight, and that there's still going to be um, a, a hearing for the extension of those leases. So it's not willy-nilly just opening up these land leases. Now, to your larger point about ceded lands, and I think Senator Chang, you know, referred to it, like, that, you know, some of these measures to ensure that we build affordable housing and we accelerate it runs into these very difficult land questions. So I think some of the approaches that the House has taken is to really work with HHFDC and the Department of Hawaiian Homelands to ensure that we can address affordable housing needs one, for the greater population, but through the work of Hawaiian homelands address the issue of affordable housing for Native Hawaiians on lands designated for Native Hawaiians. I will say that thanks to um, the commitment of um, Chair Nakashima in the Judiciary and Hawaiian Affairs Committee, as well as Chair Luke and, and everyone on the Finance Committee, we funded uh, in record numbers DHHL this year so that they can accelerate the programs for affordable housing for Native Hawaiians. But I will say one of the biggest challenges is, is the management and oversight in DHHL. So it's a really complicated issue. And so I appreciate that you bring it up, Doug. But again, I just really want to say that the Hawaii House of Representatives recognizes ceded lands. And we're not saying that they don't exist. But we're saying that the, the bills that we have to uh, uh, craft and the policies we have to craft have to weigh all of these considerations, the historical considerations, as well as the needs, the current and future needs of, of our population. Thanks, Doug, for the question. Thanks for the response. Next, we have Kathy Wise.